more than two decades ago, Clark et al., 1993. If you want to do something, your dyslexia is not a limitation. You just have to do it another way, and I think that would profit you in the end. 23-year-old student Liv is dyslexic. That means she's one of the 7% in Denmark that has a harder time to read and write. Concluding that they had a real bad limited impact from that time onwards. You feel like stupid in some way because there's things you don't understand and you just keep not understanding them. Uh, so when I figured out it was because of dyslexia, it all made sense. Liv got the diagnosis in her second year of high school. Her teachers didn't notice her dyslexia sooner because Liv was doing well in school and was used to reading a lot. I loved reading, actually. When I first learned how to read, I actually have been reading a lot. So that's also why I think I didn't get catched earlier. Uh, but like the writing part has always been like difficult for me. Even though Liv was relieved to find out why she had difficulties, she was still afraid of the prejudice. I feel like I was embarrassed because uh, I think I was a bit scared about what everybody else was thinking. Like, would their first impression being that I was stupid or that I didn't understand or I was bad in school? But that is not the case. Dyslexia has nothing to do with your intelligence. When a person reads a word, this part on the left side of the brain lights up. Very simplified, you can call it the visual area. A person without dyslexia will be able to imagine the sound of the word. And you can tell because the sound-related brain area lights up. But for a dyslexic person, it doesn't work quite like this. Instead, they use their memory. And therefore, it is difficult for them to spell a word they have never seen before. And that is exactly what Liv experiences during her social studies at university. I'm using a lot of my energy just to do the reading. So I'm not using as much energy on trying to remember um, what I'm reading. But there are special programs that can help. One of them is NODA, the library for people with reading difficulties. Here, Liv can find audiobooks for her studies. It helps me get through all my reading and my studying, uh, and it also helps me to get closer to the level that normal students, if you could say like that, uh, go to the exams to. If Noda can help, she has other options. So this is my scanner, and I use it for uh, when I get some text in paper. When the scanner has done its job, Liv can find the text in her computer so she can listen to it. Other than the audio program and the scanner, Liv can also get extra time for her exams at the university. I don't really feel limited by my dyslexia anymore. I feel like I have learned how to get around it and how it works for me and have just made me do things a bit different than everybody else. Here at the Counseling and Support Center of Aarhus University, Liv gets the help to do things differently. And she's not the only one. Every student with a diagnosis that influences their studies can apply for help. And each year, approximately 500 students with dyslexia can get help here at the center. For the past two years, Liv has gotten counseling each week. And my counselor has helped me a lot. And she's given me a lot of techniques, and I'm not sure I would have made it this far and done it as well as I have if it hasn't been for her. Apart from her counselor, Liv also gets support for her study group and friends. Hey. Hey. Today in the university park, she's meeting Karen, who found out that Liv is dyslexic while they were studying together. I think I was going to for it's a very normal thing, it's a bit of a story. Altså det der med, at så der var nogle bestemte ord, du sådan måske tit er dem, du skriver forkert på. Men det er jo ikke, fordi man ikke kan forstå, hvad der står. Jeg kan huske, der var et ord sådan operationalisering. No. Det var jo sådan tre ord om at lære at sige. Jo, det kan jeg godt huske, at der ja. var nogle af de der lidt lange ord, der var lidt svært at sige. Ja. Og så er det nok aldrig mig, der læser korrektur, men altså, det kan man ikke sige. <laughs> ja, men jeg tror, du er god til også bare til at skrive en hel masse ned, og det synes jeg godt, selvom ja. du måske ikke altid skriver det helt rigtigt. Det er jo ikke, fordi det gør dig dummere, at du skriver lidt forkert. Nej, overhovedet ikke. Not everyone was as open as Karen. Liv was faced with prejudices when she started university. Da vi startede, der var nogen, der kom sådan op til mig og sagde sådan, ej, det havde vi ikke troet om dig. For mig var det sådan lidt, jamen, hvorfor skulle jeg ikke kunne være ordblind? Ja, det altså, det måske man tænker, at så er det måske svært at komme på universitet, hvis man er ordblind. Men, Men det, det er det sådan, jo ikke i dag. Nej. Eller sådan, der er jo mange hjælpemidler til det. And because of these helping tools, dyslexia is not a disadvantage. It's just a part of who I am, and my dyslexia can be an adventure in some way because it has learned me how to make me do things differently.